Okay, so today we're going to learn about solving systems of equations. Can anyone tell me what a system of equations is? And before before we define it, we're we're solving systems of linear equations. Okay. So we need to understand what we're, what are we doing? Okay. Linear equations. Okay. So we know what an equation is. That's something with an equal sign. Um, so what is a system? Okay. This word system. This means. Yeah, this just means two or more okay, equations. Two or more equations. Good morning. And the goal of solving a system is to find the x and y coordinates where these two equations intersect. So the goal is to find the x and y coordinates where the two equations intersect. The way my teacher said is you have to find X and then you have to find Y. So I'll go ahead and put that as the second definition or the second goal. You find X and Y. You have to find both X and Y. Usually when we're solving equations, we're solving for just one letter. It might be, um, you know, 5X equals 25. Solve for X. You would divide by 5 and X equals 5. Here we're trying to find both x and y. Well, you can't, you cannot find x and y with just one equation. But if you have two equations and both of them contain x's and y's, there is some fancy stuff you can do to find out what both x and y are. So the easiest way to demonstrate what we are doing is to actually plot uh, one of these systems and then so we'll go to Desmos for that and and plot and show you I'll show you what I mean okay so if I type y equals 2x plus 4 and then below here I say y equals negative 3x plus 2 uh, let me give it. Let me do a different one. Negative three x plus. Okay. Do you see that you have these two lines, and they intersect here at zero comma four? So just very easily visually, we've just solved the system of equations. Look up here. You've got x is zero, and y is four. So the answer, if I gave you this problem and said solve this system of linear equations, that's a system, two equations. You graphed it and you pointed to where they cross, and you've solved the system. X equals zero, Y equals four, and you're done. Okay? These can come in the form of word problems. So it could say, um, if there were zero customers, it will cost the company four dollars. Okay? Or after zero minutes, there were four people waiting in line. Okay? So on the star test, they usually put it into some kind of a, a word problem form. So let's go back to the board. So did you see how visually we found X and Y? Just by pointing to the intersection point. There are other ways to solve systems. Uh, let me put an example on the board so we can learn what it is 
we're doing. What if I had this example? And I said uh, negative 2x plus y equals 4 and 3x plus y equals 4. Okay. So this would be like a, 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 an equation problem. Um, we call this symbolic algebra, where we're having to figure this out without a picture. Okay, So it's actually the same equations we just solved for. So when we have them like this, the way you do it is you stack them up, all right? And then you perform uh, something called elimination. We've gone over this, but it's been a while. By subtraction. I will show you what it is. You can, you can watch because I'm going to show you a way on the calculator, but I want you to see how to do it kind of the old school way. Okay, do you see if I subtract y from y, y will go away completely? So that would be elimination of y. So I'm going to put a minus sign out here. You can do elimination by addition or subtraction. I'm choosing subtraction because if I say y minus y, then they eliminate. Okay, because they're additive inverses in that case, they go zero. So here's what we're going to do. Ready? What is negative 2x minus 3x negative 5x right because you start with negative 2x then you take 3x away from it you're getting more negative so that would be negative 5x now what is y minus y zero and so we could put plus zero here but the way that you usually do it is you that was your whole purpose was to eliminate the letter What's 4 minus 4? Okay. So now here's my equation. What do I need to do to get x by itself? Divide both sides by negative 5, right? So remember the rule? 0 divided by anything is 0. Now on the left side, I've got negative 5x divided by negative 5. So because these are the same, I can cross them out. So now x equals not negative 5. 0 divided by negative 5 is 0. So now I've learned something. I've learned x equals 0. Okay? I'm going to put that over here in my little memory bank. Now, what I do is I substitute that 0 in for the x in either of the top or bottom equations. I like to stay away from negatives. So for here, I'm going to put it here, okay? Watch what I do here. I'm going to substitute... 0 for x. So instead of writing 3x plus y equals 4, I'm going to write 3 times 0, because x is 0. 3 times 0 plus y equals 4. Well, 3 times 0 is just 0. Right? So now I have y equals 4. So now I've learned that x equals 0 and y equals 4. Now, we don't write it like this. We write it in a coordinate notation. So I'm going to come over here and say the solution to my system and I'm going to put a coordinate 0, 4. And as we already saw graphically, this is the intersection point. Okay, do you understand a little bit about systems now? So just one more quick note before we really can dive in. How, how often do parallel lines cross? Never. So we're going to write a little note here with a working marker. So because parallel lines never cross, because parallel lines never cross, 
systems of parallel lines have no solution. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you an example. Y equals 7x plus 3, and y equals 7x plus 9. Those lines have the same slope. Okay, this is the dead giveaway that you're working with parallel lines. Same slope, parallel lines. Let me show you what that looks like graphically. So it's y equals 7x plus 3. And y equals 7x plus 9. Okay, look. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. They're never going to cross, right? Because they're parallel. Parallel lines have no solution. How many solutions do parallel lines have? Zero. So if the star test asks you a question, gives you four graphs. Let's go back to, back to the board here. You're given four graphs. Real quick. Okay. Here's a graph. Here's a graph. Here's a graph. Here's a graph. And maybe the first graph looks like this. Second graph looks like this. Third graph looks like this. And the fourth graph looks like this. Which graph has no solution? A, B, C, or D? This one. No solution because they're parallel. Okay? This is going to be a question on the test. Almost every year, you're going to see a visual. It will say, choose the graph. Choose the graph that has no solution. Bingo. Now, look here at this one. This is a, the final kind of weird case. Do you notice how I only drew one line? I actually drew two lines. First, I drew this line. And then I drew this line. Any idea of how many solutions this particular system has? It's a system of two equations. The equations are y equals, I don't know, 1 half x plus 2. And the second equation is y equals 1 half x plus 2. What can you tell me about these two equations? They're the same. So this situation is kind of the final weird situation. In this case, this would have infinitely many solutions. Okay? Infinitely many solutions. So that was what we might call the lecture. Now I want to show you the tricks on the calculator. So make sure you turn your calculator on, clear the memory. Please remember we are on a recording. OK, sure. And I'm going to pull up the calculator software. Because there's a way to solve these systems without, without you having to do any math, okay? You, but you have to learn something on the calculator. Just give me a moment to get this pulled up. We're going to do number 25 as a second plus 
you. All right, looking at uh, number 25. This is from, this is on page 50, right in the middle of the page, number 25. Let me get down there. What test did this come from? Okay. All right, here it is. So this is a real question from a real test. This is the kind of question that used to leave me completely confused, right? Can can we read it together? Can someone would someone like to volunteer to, to help me read it? The college student configures some courses with three credits and some courses with four credits. The student earned a total of fifty nine credits after completing eighteen courses. How many courses were three credits to the city complete? Very good. So the, right now, if, if we don't know what to do, this is completely confusing. And you might try to kind of uh, mentally get your way out of it, but you're not going to, you'd be trial and error, okay? So there's a way. We just need to learn how to write this sentence down in math form, okay? So I'm going to have to... The, the memory on the computer, if I start writing on the screen, I know, already know it's going to freeze the computer, so we're just going to have to keep bouncing back and forth. So this was number 25. It says here, a college student, we don't care if it's a college student, that's irrelevant, completed some courses worth three credits. So y'all write this down. Above where it says some courses with three credits, can you circle some courses worth three credits? Circle that. So some courses were three credits. Circle this and write three X above it. What's wonderful about math is that we can condense some courses worth three credits to three X. Okay. And some courses worth four credits. So circle circle some courses worth four credits. These would be different courses, so we're going to use a different letter. What letter do you think we're going to use? Yep. Okay, circle that. Some courses worth four credits, and we're going to call this 4Y. Question. How many total credits did the person earn? 59, okay? So 3x, so some courses worth 3 credits and some courses worth 4 credits, 4y. These two add together okay, to equal 59. Okay, now the final sent the final clause of the of the second sentence says after completing 18 courses. So we have this situation here, and then right down here I need to write x plus y. That would be the first course plus the second course equals 18. So now we have two equations. 3x plus 4y equals 59. X plus y equals 18. Okay. Can I erase this part here? So remember that. 3x plus 4y equals 59. x plus y equals 18. 3x plus 4y equals 59. You need to write this down. x plus y equals 18. Now, if we were old school, we would begin this process of solving the system by attempting to use sub substitution or elimination. <clears throat> but there's an easier way, okay? What numbers go in front of the X and the Y when there's no number? One. So go ahead and put ones there for me. And now create a little table out of this. Like this. Shit, what I need to do. We're creating what's called a matrix. <laughs> this 
called a two by three matrix because it has two rows and three columns. We're now going to strip all the letters out and just save the numbers. So over here, I'm going to create a smaller matrix like this. Three, four, 59. One, one, 18. Okay? And if you want, you can put that in a box. Okay. Okay, this is your gold. If you have this and you remember how to use a calculator, you can get the answer. Remember what our goal is. We're trying to find X and Y. This top row is going to give us X. The bottom row is going to give us Y. So now we need to go to our calculators. Not stat edit. It's a new one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think the first step is stat edit. So, um, yeah, let's go to stat. No, no, no. We're not going to stat edit. Sorry, well, I got we started off on stat edit. Let's let's clear our minds of stat edit. Okay. So uh, the first the first thing we need to do is go to our matrix table, which is if you look here, um, there's this little button that says matrix uh, above it. So you have to hit the second key to get to it. So it's second matrix. All right. Now you need to go over to edit. So you need to right arrow over to edit. And then just hit enter on matrix A. And you have to tell the computer how many rows and how many columns. Matrix go row, X, column. So it's two rows and then three columns. And even if you don't remember that, just mess with it until it looks like this. Do you see how this looks like the table we made? Okay. Okay, now we just got to fill it in. So we're going to type 3, enter, 4, enter, 59, enter. Then we're going to type 1, enter, 1, enter, 18, enter. Okay, let me know when you get that done. Okay, now hit second mode to quit. And now hit second matrix again. And now we need to go right arrow over to math. And we need to go down until we see B R R E F open parentheses. So BREF, it stands for reduced row echelon form. But that is way, way too advanced. It's just so you know, B R R E F, not A ref, but B ref, B ref. You understand? Mm -hmm. Which one do we choose, A or B? B. Remember that. Now hit enter. Don't hit anything else. Now we're going to hit second matrix again. Don't touch anything. Just hit enter, enter. Let me know if you see this. Do you see that? Okay. So it says 1, 0, 13, 0, 1, 5. Okay, let's hop back to the, the screen. I mean the... Uh, so look down here. 1, 0, 13, 0, 1, 5. Very, very easily, folks. The top row is X. The bottom row is Y. So if I wanted to write this in the form that I told you to write it in as a coordinate pair, I would write x comma y, which would be 13 comma 5. Now we need to understand what does this mean? Because we've got to go back to our math problem now and interpret how many courses worth three credits did the student complete? Which one is it? Is it 13 or is it 5? 13. Because remember, it was the courses worth three credits, we called 3x. 
So we need to give 13 as our answer. So the answer is A. Now listen, that seems like a lot. However, if you just memorize the process, and we'll, we'll do, um, we need to practice that, the calculator process. But if you memorize that process, you will always be right. Um, okay, so the easiest thing to do is just to do another problem as quickly as possible. So let's do number 37, and then I think we might call it a day. Because this is kind of a heavy topic. 5C is a, is a tough teak. So let's take a look at number 37 while I erase some stuff. Can somebody read it, please? What is the value of x in the solution to this system? Okay, so we want to find x. Oh, the only way to find x is to solve for both x and y. So let me just write this down. They give us 3x minus 5y equals 22. And then they give us, I'm going to write it over here because we're going to have to do something to it, y equals negative 5x plus 32. Okay, let me go back to the board. This equation here is written in the form that I need it to be in to put it in the calculator. This is called standard form. Okay, and uh, that's AX plus BY equals C. This is written in slope-intercept form, okay? Remember, that's Y equals MX plus B. So I need to convert this form to this form and stack the two equations on top of one another in order to actually proceed. So what would I need to do to move this negative 5X over here on this side of the equation? I want to take negative 5x, I want to move it over on the other side of the equation. Come on. So you add 5x to both sides, subtract 5x from both sides, multiply both sides by a negative 5x. Add, you think? Okay, let's try it. So add 5x to both sides. Okay. Does this cancel? Are these additive inverses? Yeah. Okay. So now on the, the right side, I've got 32. And then on the left side, I've got 5x plus y. Does this now look like it's in the form ax plus by equals c? Yeah. What's the b? 1. Okay. So what I can do now is I can... I, um, that was the one step I had to do, like a preliminary side work step. Now I can bring it over here and we're going to jump right into our matrix operation. So it's 5x plus 1y equals 32. Okay, now do we feel comfortable? This is what we just did. We're going to strip the numbers out. So my matrix table will be 3, negative 5, 22, 5, 1, 32. Remember, when you solve this, the top row is going to give you x, the bottom row is going to give you y, and they want to know what x is. So this is your table to put into the matrix editor. And I, I'm going to go walk through it again with you, okay? So the, the easiest thing to do is to start fresh with a clear memory. So on the calculator, just so we don't have any confusion whatsoever. Second plus seven, one, two, give you the clear memory. That way we're all starting from the same page. Now hit second, look, we wanna hit this matrix, so we gotta hit second matrix. Second matrix, arrow, arrow over to edit, and then hit enter on A. This is a two row by three column, oops, not a 23 row, a two row, by 
three column matrix. So now we're just going to type this stuff in. That was three, enter. Please make sure this is the negative symbol. Negative five, enter. 22, enter. Five, enter. One, enter. 32, enter. You with me? We got to quit. Second mode. Quit. Second matrix. Go to math. What letter do I go to? B. Go to B ref. Enter. What's the last step? Second matrix. Enter, enter. Done. So what's X? X is 6.5. Done. Okay. What's the answer? C. How do you like it? Is this a cool trick? All right, guys. Thank you for your attention today. Um, we, uh, we're cutting it a little early here because that was a heavy dose of, of class. So thanks, guys.